All right, what's up, guys? Coach Joe with the legend Alan Thrall, still with his beard. He just got back from uh, getting married, so he's committed for life. <laughs> Love it. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do is just pretty much talk about programming questions that people had asked in the Barbell Medicine group uh, with me and you coaching me and helping me with uh, Strongman as I get ready for USS Nationals, which is this Saturday, uh, which I thought people just are really interested in because. You know, you have a strong man background, but you're also doing the RPE stuff and coaching for barbell medicine. So they had some good questions, and I figured we'll just kind of get into it. Cool, man. Sounds good. All right. So the first question that we have is what kind of hair and conditioner beard does – no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that is actually a question, though. <laughs> um, but, of course. Uh, so Tyler Smith asks, um, how do you incorporate the lifts that will be in the comp – to the training block, uh, or how have you like try to program that in for me uh, over the, the I guess the last five months? Yeah, there will probably be uh, a lot of overlap in like the, all the answers for these questions uh, because I'll, you know I'll be talking about a lot of the same stuff. Um, but when I first, uh, I'll just try to kind of be uh, just focus on the question that yep. was just asked. But the uh, when I saw the events. Uh, I realized pretty quickly that the events are not that technical. Uh, other than the circus dumbbell, which is really awkward and that does require some practice, um, a tire flip, drag, uh, arm over arm pull, uh, car deadlift, yes, there's definitely some technique, um, but it's not as technical as like a clean and jerk or something like that. Um, so... With that, I knew that we didn't have to practice. Like when we first started, we didn't have to practice those lifts right now um, because, you know, initially you had said that you just wanted to get stronger and get your lifts back up. Uh, you kind of felt like, you know, from what I remember, you were kind of all over with programming or you just, you just, I think, wanted some guidance. More so just to, like, take the burden off your shoulders and be like, I'm done trying to figure this, trying to program for myself uh, I need some help. Um, and you said you just, you just want to get stronger. So we didn't really practice the lifts. I'm sorry, the events too much right off the bat. We waited until recently when we got a little bit closer. But mainly the short answer is because those lifts aren't that technical, um, in my opinion. And that's to say you don't need, you personally don't need a ton of practice with the implements. Someone else who's never done them before might. Uh, You've done strongman before. You're an athletic dude. You don't need a whole lot of practice with that stuff. So, yeah, that's that's kind of the answer for that question. Yeah, I would definitely say with my background, I guess it depends on on the athlete, like you were saying. But for me, like the the one event that caught my eye was a circus dumbbell in terms of like technicality. You know, like you said, the rest yeah. are are really simple. So it's kind of like like what we were talking about for me is I needed to get my strength up. Like when when I go into competitions, the guys I'm going against are deadlifting, you know, between 650, 700 pounds, almost like regularly. So for me, that was what I kind of reached out to you about. Like, let's just get the strength up for the next four or five months. You know, I think that the, the only technical thing I need to work on is the circus dumbbell, you know, so, so yeah, that worked out really nice. Um, and, and, uh, kind of go off that. I didn't think that, um, uh, well, a couple of things to say, but the, with the circus dumbbell, that's like, we didn't do that a whole lot because that in itself is a skill, a very uh, technical thing that needs to be practiced that can't really be incorporated too much into like general strength training. Mm -hmm. Like what I mean is if, if you had an axle clean and press or a log clean and press, we would probably have done a lot more pressing with that because there is like your, your increase, you can increase your press while practicing the axle uh, or the log, but the circus dumbbell, like we're not going to do a single at eight and then drop 20% do five by six to so like on each arm, you know, it's like yeah, yeah. such an odd movement that's unilateral that it, it really is like way on one end of, you know, specificity. So we're going to practice that. Um, so that was another reason we didn't really incorporate it right yeah. off the bat. Um, uh, totally agree. The, yeah, the circus dumbbell is just such a strange event. It's like such just a balancing act of a movement. <laughs> and, it's, and in my opinion, it's just dangerous. You know what I mean? Like whenever I'm doing a yeah. circus dumbbell, I'm like, there's a lot that can go wrong with this, so I'd rather limit the training with that uh, in terms of like a strongman 
perspective. Like you said, like a log, because it's different axle bar. You can press or throw that in. But Circus Dumbuff, no one's ever used it. You know, try it out, and then you'll understand kind of what we're talking about in terms of using that. Yeah, sometimes it's body weight, uh, just under body weight, or even more than your body weight on in one hand on one side of your body. It's so weird, you know. Um, but one other thing that I uh, was thinking about earlier is uh, when I when I looked at like you and what you were doing, and I'd been following your channel, so I already knew who you were. I didn't think that uh, you were going to have an issue at Nats with being, you know, with conditioning or with technique necessarily. It was like you said, it was going to be come down to strength. Yeah. It wasn't going to be like, dang, if you were just a little better conditioned, maybe you would have won. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's that would be the case, you know. So, yeah, uh, so yeah, just another reason to focus more on strength training mm -hmm. than a uh, whole bunch of skill work. So the next question that I have here is, how do you know when you're ready and strong enough to compete in a strongman uh, event or competition? And maybe what are some benchmark numbers to reference uh, to know that you're ready? Yeah, I think I think you could answer these like most of these questions pretty much like the same that that I would. Um, so feel free to add to whatever yeah, I say, well, but I think bounce back and forth. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, I think that. Uh, um, sorry, man. I think that. Uh, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. You're good. Yeah, just benchmark numbers, maybe for people or yeah, yeah, yeah. Are looking to get uh, in competition. Need something? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, I'm talking to him. Sorry, dude. No, you're um, so yeah, the uh, strongman is not as. Uh, there is more of an answer to that than there is like how much do I need to lift to do a powerlifting meet? Because um, you can select any number you want. If you want to bench 50 kilos, they'll put that on the bar. Mm -hmm. But with strongman, there are numbers that you're stuck with for the most part, uh, and you have to lift that. Um, so there are some some benchmark numbers, but to say exactly what those need to be is kind of tough. Um, but to give an answer, I guess. Uh, to compete as a, a novice athlete, uh, men's novice, uh, I'd say you should probably be probably deadlifting at like 365 for a few reps. Because usually, I'm just thinking of like the events that I host, the events that I've attended, mm -hmm. usually what those numbers are. And it's usually, the deadlift event is usually like, no matter what kind of deadlift it is, you know, it's usually 365 or 405 for reps. Um, uh, and so I'll just kind of stick with novice for now because that would usually be what someone asking that question is probably going to compete as a novice. Uh, for overhead, it's going to be usually like 185 to 205 for reps maybe, um, sometimes 225 if it's a heavy competition. Um, and then there's usually never a squat event. Um, so press and deadlift are really the only two things that I would go off of. Um, and then the other things are just, you know, you should probably be able to carry uh, a farmer's carry 200 pounds per hand for 50 feet. You know, these are all just kind of arbitrary numbers that I'm like making up based off uh, past experience. But uh, it's tough to say. I would look at the event coming up and then just gauge on like, you know, do I want to do this event or not? Mm -hmm. um, but to be a little bit more specific, to say how strong should I be to be competitive? Uh, obviously those numbers need to be higher, but in order to just compete in an event and not, not zero, uh, I would probably say those numbers like 185 to 205 press for a couple of reps, 365 to 405 deadlift for a handful of reps, I think would be a good place to start. Yeah. I would say like my thing is piggybacking off everything you would say is, is really like just, you know, compete, you know, like I think so many people are just held back with like the fear of like zeroing and yeah zeroing it's not fun but at the same time you know it, i think it's par for the course at some point you know even at, at the level that i'm at like there could be an event where i'm not going to do so well but i can't let that fear of that happening hold me back from competing uh but in, in terms of numbers i would say yeah the deadlift anywhere from 350 in that range for like a couple reps the overhead press definitely like 185 to the twos uh, I think my first competition was a, a max hold with like 225 in each hand in the farmer uh, handles. And then um, uh, some of the, like, if I was beginning, like what I did is I just looked at the events, like you were saying, and something that kind of like appealed to me, like, okay, 
I, I can get the equipment to or mimic that some way. So it's not something I've never touched before. So I'd say don't pick a competition where you're not going to be able to train for all of the events that you're going to be competing in because that's never good. Um, yeah. Just kind of like or something that you're interested in or, or, you know, that you can mimic closely. Then you're going to be into the training, have more experience with that. Uh, but I just think, you know, kind of like, like what you said, those numbers I definitely agree with. And then just get out there, start training, you know, like – just immerse yourself into it. Like we all started somewhere. You're not going to like walk into your first competition and just like kick it completely in the ass. You're going to have like obstacles in the way. Uh, but yeah, man, definitely. I think that a lot of people get worried. I don't know if it's like social media or they're like worried about not doing well and the whole world knowing about it or like all their followers on Facebook or Instagram, like knowing that they didn't do well. Um, cause when I first started, uh, there was like, there was MySpace, um, but we, you know, like we didn't post a lot on MySpace, like events, but I didn't, uh, <laughs> no, I didn't, oh my God. I didn't hurt. Yeah. Oh, awful. Uh, but I would, uh, I went into the events as like, uh, just really eager to like be a part of it, you know, like yeah. rather than, rather than watch it, I was like, it's going to be so cool that I get to be a competitor. Uh, and a lot of the events I didn't really practice for cause I was in the Marine Corps and I had limited equipment to what I could use and limited time. But I was like just really eager to try it, you know, uh, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, and I didn't have to worry about like, dude, if I do, if I do terrible, all my followers are going to know, you know, like, so I don't, I don't really know why so many people are so worried about what everyone thinks. Everyone at competitions are always supportive. Um, but, but yeah, maybe there's some sort of social media pressure that people have of like, not doing well or something. I don't know, Maybe. but I didn't really. The flip side of that though is I think the coolest pictures you can get are in like competitions. Like when you get like a picture or someone takes a picture of you competing, like, oh my God, that's like the reason to do it is because then you can throw that shit on your social media. <laughs> yeah. 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 So both sides of that. Yeah, exactly. But, um, I, I think, I don't know your experience cause I know you're into like powerlifting and you've done the strong man uh, and you did a, a weightlifting me too. So we're kind of comparable in, in that aspect. Uh, but I feel like the community has been the coolest in uh, powerlifting and strongman. Like going to the like the meets and the strongman competitions, I think like hands down the most supportive people. Everyone is so cool. You get the like the music's always really good and everyone's cheering for you and the atmosphere is just uh, you know like electric. So I, I encourage people like you said just to be a part of that and it's it's a really cool experience. Yeah, absolutely. What was, didn't, did you just have a competition or were you like co-hosting one? Yeah, I was co-hosting with Ironborn Strength, which is, which is a gym about an hour away. Uh, and uh, the owner, he and I have hosted a handful of competitions and we do what's called the Iron Gauntlet once a year. Okay. And so, uh, so yeah, I was helping host that event this weekend. Yeah, that, that looked pretty cool. That place looks like just a, uh, a hardcore uh, strongman playground. <laughs> Yeah, it is. He uh, he calls it he calls it the gym of broken dreams because every single because every single piece of equipment that he has is all like old used equipment that he bought off Craigslist or uh, you know uh, in stores around town. He doesn't like buy any anything rogue or anything online. He all of it is just old junk equipment that that's the appeal of the gym. But it's it's like a you know filthy gym that he like. They don't want to clean. It's just this dirty, hot warehouse, but it's huge, and it's got tons of equipment. Uh, but it, it's it's a it's a cool gym to be at. Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty badass. Um, yeah. So the next question we have, and, and this is one I think you've done videos on, uh, but it's how to train for strongman when you don't have access to strongman equipment, uh, or you're stuck in a commercial gym. Like, what would you recommend for somebody to do or work with? Yeah, there's tons of stuff online on YouTube that you've made, I've made. Brian's made uh, a bunch of stuff from starting strongman uh, stuff that they've made articles, but uh, some, a lot of strongman equipment is not very hard to get a hold of if you're uh, if you can get a sand get your hands on a sandbag, um, you know doing farmers carries with dumbbells is not the same, but it's something. Um, I've seen where you like I don't know if a, your gym would be okay with it, but where you take the sleeve off the end of a barbell load it with bumper plates and then do the, like the stone trainer like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, training in a commercial gym, I would just, I would do a lot of pressing, push pressing, deadlifting, uh, and carries. Um, 
you know, just dumbbell carries. Mm -hmm. uh, past that, I don't really have any, you know, great ideas. But, I mean, if you have a backyard or just a place where you can store some sandbags for carries, um, even, you know, some of the sandbags uh, that are round, you could do like a stone, you know, like the new rogue sandbags that you have and that I got. Yeah, they're they're round sandbags, and you can do stone stone loads with those. Um, you can find a natural stone. I have a few natural stones here at the gym. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. You just got to be clever. But there's there's tons of videos online. I made one, I don't know, a month or so ago about a tire and then a toe strap that I bought at the gym and, like, you know, putting something on the tire and dragging that or doing an arm over arm row where you're just dragging an old tire. Um so there's a lot of stuff you can get clever with. Yeah, I definitely think if you, if you can make it on your own, uh, you can save a ton of money. Like I, I've saved so much money on what people probably make hundreds of dollars or sell it for like on Rogue or whatever. Um, but even just like basic ideas like, uh, like buying fat grips and you can put them around dumbbells at the gym or whatever to kind of mimic maybe like, you know, something with like a wider grip, like an axle or, or a farmer handles. Uh, but I think you probably would agree with me on this, but I'm way more of a better to ask for forgiveness than permission kind of guy. So like if you're in the gym, you know what I mean? Uh, and they have yep. stuff like do whatever you can until someone tells you otherwise. Cause I think most gyms will probably actually let, a, let you get away with more than you probably would think. Or if you explain it to them, you know, then they're like, Oh, okay. You know, that makes sense. Um, so I would say, you know, before you, you kind of like think you don't have any solutions or you're stuck, just look at, like you said, YouTube, the videos you've made, I put out some stuff, Brian, whoever, and then try some of that, and if they're cool with it, you know, now you can you can make it work. So it's just kind of making it work in your situation, really. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, here's a good one. Is strongman beneficial to powerlifting? So, uh, I'm going to say I think the context is very important here. Um, so, who is the athlete? Uh, what is their current? experience with training uh so what i mean is if you were a just a complete novice and you were just starting out lifting weights uh and you did some deadlifts some bench press uh you got yourself a log did some log press did some sandbag carries did some sled drags uh you're gonna get a lot stronger using strongman training um but I think that further down that uh, spectrum uh, of experience, so the closer you are to more of an advanced athlete, I think the less return you'll get from strongman training. Um, and I know some people are going to disagree with that, but uh, no, whatever. It's my, it's my opinion. Um, I think that if you're trying to get a lot better at powerlifting, you know, and you're trying to increase your deadlift, time would be better spent deadlifting more than starting to do stone loads or tire flips or sandbag carries. Um, so it's kind of a point of diminishing returns. And I would even argue that the further down the line you are, if you're deadlifting 700 pounds, trying to get your deadlift to 750 pounds, I think that incorporating some strongman training routine, depending on the individual again, could actually be detrimental to where you're just putting in more stress to your routine that's not worth it. Um, so again, context is important. But for most people listening to this, they're probably beginners. They're probably novice, maybe just getting into lifting. Uh, and I think that if they want to do strongman training, they have fun doing strongman training. It actually keeps them uh, their level of compliance up, so they're actually excited to train because they get to do a little bit of strongman training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. And I think that will help you get stronger. But the question was better at powerlifting. So if you're talking about the better at, better at the sport of powerlifting – I don't really know, but just general strength training, yes. Kind of a back and forth answer, but yeah, hopefully I that made know, sense. Uh, for me personally, so uh, probably before we had were, were working together, I was doing like an excessive amount of strongman stuff, and like you were saying, I actually think that that uh, set me back a little bit because I wasn't putting the proper stress and focus into the right areas for my training personally. Um, but like you said, I think if I have novices or anyone here in the gym and they're doing that kind of stuff, they're going to get good results or gains and, and they're not going to, you know, it's not going to be too boring for them. Um, but even like, uh, I know you're friends with uh, Bryce from Calgary Barbell. So I kind of had him in the back of my mind, like, you know, he's training for worlds or he just got done worlds. 
like for him at his level to do strongman, like, you know, it's, it's not going to be the best thing for him in that specific situation. Maybe for like, you know, when he's done or has like a pivot block or something like that and he wants to like screw around and do whatever, like that's, that's fine probably. But for when you're trying to really work towards a specific goal uh, or at that level for power lifting, I, d I wouldn't think that it would be the best in it for, for that personally. Right. And another example of like two people that are on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you have some, you know, fat, out of shape, weak, you know, teenager who says, do you think strongman training will make me faster? Uh, you could say, yeah, we're going to do some strongman training. That's going to help you lose some weight. You're going to get a lot stronger. And now you're going to run faster. But to have, you know, someone who's training for the Olympics, like should we incorporate some strongman training in the routine to get them faster? No. I don't yeah. think so. So, uh, so yeah, it's kind of, again, depends on the context. Yeah, even like, uh, I forget what weightlifting book it was, but it pretty much talks about like an Olympic level weightlifter, and pretty much all they do is clean and jerk snatch and like one squat variation and like a press variation. Like that's how specific their training is. When if you look back from the beginner, it's like hundreds of reps of like different pulling positions and, and all that kind of stuff uh, just to kind of get them used to that. But I always explain that to yeah. people like – even with me, like, I don't really do Olympic lifting that much. You know, I still have the skill of Olympic lifting, but as long as I increase my strength and I, I you know, I don't fall off the face of the planet, I'm still going to be decent at clean and jerking and snatching and maybe even PR. You know what I mean? Right. Um, all right, cool. So this kind of segues in uh, to, to more programming talk now, but um, how do you even get started with programming and, uh, like, selecting – your assistance work or setting up, uh, you know, the, the main comp lifts or main movements, like what, what's your thought process when you go into something like that? Uh, maybe depending on one type of athlete or kind of different types of people you deal with and, and coach for your clients. Um, yeah, I think to give an immediate, uh, reference would be Brian's done a video for me. It was the, I think the one video he actually did for my channel, which was a free strongman program. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've done that on your uh, channel before, like a strongman routine. Uh, so go go check those out. Um, but as far as how I'm going to program for someone who's interested in strongman training, uh, again, context is important. Is this person just starting out uh, or are they already pretty strong and they want to train for a competition? Uh, that's going to, that's going to depend, that's going to determine what the program looks like. But uh, I think that, First and foremost, the barbell lifts should be emphasized, should be the meat and potatoes of a program. You're deadlifting, you're squatting. I don't care if it's a low bar squat, high bar squat, front squat, SSB. You're just getting your legs stronger squatting. Uh, you're pressing, you're benching. Uh, I think that's most important. And then you do need to be conditioned. And I think that uh, using strongman training for conditioning at first would be a good idea. So doing some farmer's carries, sandbag carries, medleys to where you're, you know, 60 feet down, sprint back, 60 feet down, sprint back, uh, tire flips, stuff like that. Um, so it's hard, it's hard to give a, a straightforward answer to that. But uh, what I've done in the past with people who are competing in competition, uh, we usually always focus on a lower body lift. You're good. We do a, a lower body lift, an upper body lift. And then we'll do either some skill work at the end for a strongman uh, 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 event or conditioning with strongman. Um, so the stuff that I just mentioned. That's how I would you know, program it first. And then as we got closer to competition, we might get more specific. So we're not doing so much barbell pressing and benching. We might uh, add in a day of log press or axle clean and press. But always the meat and potatoes of the program are, are barbell lifts. I use strongman training as more of conditioning at first. So my question for you, or probably what other people are wondering too, is at uh, what time frame would you start incorporating uh, more of the specificity to the the, uh, the events as like you're approaching? So say we're like six months out, right? So the competition is going to be in six months. When would you start putting in the event work? That again depends on depends on the individual. Uh, and when I started programming for you. Like looking at the events, there was no, it was no sweat. Is the music too loud? 
No, you're good. You're good. In my back. Okay. Um, uh, but there was no sweat on the events. You know, it's not like, you know, we got to really work on this technique right now. Um, again, other than the circus dumbbell. But even your circus dumbbell, I think, was already good enough. Um, so I knew that we can we can hold back on the events for a little while. Uh, but if someone was already pretty strong, maybe they're transferring over from powerlifting to strongman, uh, and they already had a good deadlift, strong upper body, uh, at that point I'm going to probably incorporate some of that stuff, some implement practice sooner. Uh, so I, I know I keep saying it depends on the individual. I don't, I don't like waffling back and forth, but – uh, there's really not a, like a set answer to say one month out we need to practice mm -hmm. um, because I've seen I've seen competitions uh, where there is one guy who wins who's extremely athletic, extremely fast, explosive, uh, probably a good visual learner to where he can just like see how something's done and replicate it. Uh, not particularly big and strong, but he'll win. Uh, and then the other side of that. I see these big ogres who come in and just manhandle everything and end up winning. Usually at a local competition. It's not going to happen at Nats. But, uh, and so, like, you look at those two individuals and say, like, if this smaller guy wants to get a lot better, uh, we need to get him a lot stronger. Uh, he's already really athletic. He's good with the implements. But the ogre, who, you know, is already front squatting 405, you know, pressing 225 for some reps, uh, but he's got some awful technique, you know, you can say, all right, for this next event, we're going to practice a lot more, get you more exposure to the, uh, the actual implements. So yeah, depends. <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely. I think that's the hard part with these questions is it, there's so many variables that can go into it. It's kind of like when you hear, uh, if you watch either Jordan or Austin's lives and someone's like asking about pain or injury, and they're like, yeah, we don't really have any context. So it's so yeah. to, to respond. Um, so a question uh, that I had to, well, I mean, obviously we talk, so I understand, but maybe people would uh, like this is, so when we first started uh, with deadlifts, I used to do touch and go deadlifts a lot. And then for you, when you were programming me, you were telling me to reset every time. Um, then for strongman though, so like car deadlift is going to be touch and go. So maybe what's your thoughts on like why to reset with the deadlifts? Like what's the point of that? And then, uh, you know, for strongman, like touch and go, I think someone had said something about how do you feel uh, with like fatigue, I guess, management or like fatigue in like form breakdown, all that kind of stuff, but like, you know, kind of centered around competition and uh, that kind of, I think would bring in a good question about like hitching. So I think it's kind of, we can like segue to that. Um, but let's talk first about the deadlift on what your thoughts on the deadlift with resetting every time and why you'd have your clients do that. Yeah. So when I first uh, started programming for you, it was just, I was just really wanting to increase all your lifts. Mm -hmm. uh, not so much like we need to we need to prepare you for nats. Well, the way that I thought about that, I thought you'd be best prepared is to get a lot stronger. Um, and so I didn't worry about like the transfer of your touch and go deadlifts to a touch and go uh, car deadlift. I knew that once we started doing the car deadlift, you could start doing touch and go, mm -hmm. which is fine. Um, but the main issue or the main reason for me telling you not to do touch and go deadlifts was good because of your back issue that you were having. Um, and personally, I think that I'm not against touch and go deadlifts and I don't, I would never say that like you have a higher risk of injury for doing touch and go deadlifts than you would if you just reset. Um, but just in my own personal experience of like hurting my back and working with my clients, um, if there is an issue, I'd rather you set the weight down, reset and pull. Set the weight down, brace, reset, and pull. So that was the main reason. Uh, and you had that issue even before I started working with you. I think you were mentioning that deadlifts were giving you some problems. Yeah. Um, so it was like stop doing touch and go. Uh, you, touch and go usually tells me that the, the, the client or the athlete is in a rush. Um, you're just, fuck, I want to bang. I just want to get these done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd rather just set it down, reset, and pull. Um, for, for actual powerlifting reasons, um, I just think that it maybe prepares you a little bit better for, you know, one rep because you're not, you're not having that eccentric before anyways. Um, but the, ma the main reason would be managing your back issue, okay. I would say. Yeah, right on. So if people didn't know, yeah, I hurt my back in uh, January 
actually doing what did I, do? I was actually squatting which is weird i don't even know like of all things it was squatting so shit happens um yeah. But yeah, that set my deadlift back. I think I couldn't pull over like 300 pounds. So when we started, it was like we were starting from the ground up with that. Um, but I kind of, you know, just kept faith in, in the process, didn't get myself worked up or panic or anything like that, and gradually just started progressively working back up, um, which was really cool. So if you haven't checked out Austin's whole thing and Jordan's about pain and all that good stuff, definitely check that out. It's on your channel, my channel fascinating stuff uh which if you're coming to the seminar you'll be at the seminar right at, at my place yep yep november right? yeah november yeah yep. so uh, they'll be talking about that there um but then all right so thoughts on uh hitching in strongman uh do it if uh if you're hitching in strongman uh if the question is like whether or not you should do it uh yeah do it but i would uh I would probably suggest doing it when you need it, mm -hmm. when you need to do it. Um, but if that's the question, like, do I think it's fair or do I think it's uh, necessary? I think do it. You know, it's like your, uh, uh, it's a backup. If you need to, if it's going to help you get a few more reps, do it. Yeah. I don't think that uh, the majority of your training needs to consist of pitching deadlifts. Um, but yeah, is there like more a more specific question about hitching? Um, like what know, what are what are they asking? They just said, uh, "What do you think about extreme form breakdown for the sake of getting more reps in the same amount of time?" Uh, like this is in the purpose of strongman. For example, extreme hitching during the deadlift. Yeah, I don't think there's you don't get any points for how good it looks. Uh, it's whether or not you stood up with it. Uh, and so the goal is to do as many reps as you can. If hitching allows you to get more reps, then do it. Um, hundred percent. I would never like, I would never say, you know, like, yeah, he got five more reps than me, but he hitched, you know, like, fuck, yeah. you could have hitched too, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so in the context of what he was talking about, yes, do it. <laughs> Cause that's, that's the, uh, the only thing I would say is like, just be smart about it to the point where like is, is doing, you know, three, four five more reps while hitching, squeezing those last few reps. Is that going to, is that setting you up for the ne the rest of the day, maybe even the next day if it's a two-day event? That's a really, uh, really good point. So, yeah. yeah. But that's just based off where you're standing. You know what I mean? If you're like, uh, you know, I'm okay with coming in third place, second place, or tying first, uh, and not having to do a few more hitch deadlifts, then I'm fine with that. Uh, I know that the, the other events are my best. But if it's, you know, the last event and you need it, then, yeah, use the hitch. So. Yeah, my, uh, my, my one competition, I had to do a max yoke walk. I think it was for 50 feet. And, uh, I mean, I'm sure you can relate to this, but in strongman, sometimes you don't even know if you have warm-up equipment or anything to do for warm-ups. Like, you'll show up, and they may just have, like, an area, but there's nothing you can do. You can't touch the implements sometimes. depends on the promoter. Uh, but we our first event was a max yoke walk, and we had nothing to practice yoke walks with. So... We're sitting over there, like, doing body weight squats. Like, you know, there's nothing you can do to prepare for this. Um, and uh, I think my either my first or second attempt, I ended up with uh, 850 pounds. And I remember, like, in my head, I was like, I want a 1,000-pound yoke. Like, that's what I wanted. Um, but uh, a buddy of mine was there, and he's like, dude, like, do not do the 1,000-pound yoke. He's like, you have, like, four more events, you know, after this. And it's going to be this, 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 and this like save that because these guys who are probably getting real competitive uh and that's what happened you know people were trying to push like thousand plus pound yoke walks uh, and it took everything in me to just be like no i'm not gonna do it like my ego was just going nuts at that moment um but i was so thankful i did so like that was a really good point i'm glad you brought that up is is even just as an athlete you know just looking at the events you know in the competition try to like break it down with you know what do you have left how much can you put in are the reps worth it that or what are you going to put your body through you know if it's the last event compared to the first event it, there's a lot to think about in, in that regard yeah definitely and you do have to like you know not everyone's going to know all the competitors and their strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. uh sometimes you do know like this guy's a really good presser yeah. his deadlift sucks or whatever uh but to know like your strengths and weaknesses and to say like Rather, I mean, if it's your first competition, by all means, like go balls out. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there are competitions, even this weekend, where like the guy who was going last needed like nine reps to win to win that event. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and it's like 16, 17. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You know, you're done. Like, you're done at nine. But uh, it's just, he's like, ah! I'm like, oh my God, man, you don't need to do all this. So yeah, be smart about where you're standing is. So. Yeah, yeah, right on. Well, that's uh, that's pretty much all the programming questions that people have put in the thread. Um, so I think they'll be pretty happy with this. And if they have anything else, you know, we can always do another one for them or, or maybe something more in depth on a specific topic. Uh, but I thought we, we answered them the best we could. Like you said, it really depends on the, the athlete, the competition, the time frame, uh, and their experience, essentially, to, to answer these more in depth. So I would say if they have more in-depth questions, either shoot you or, or an I an email or just comment on the thread to whatever this video is going to be posted on, and we can try to help them out more. Um, but, yeah, man. Yeah. I think that uh, just in closing thoughts, I think that uh, you just have to be aware of what your weaknesses are. So are do you just need to get a whole lot stronger, uh, or do you are you already pretty strong and you just need to practice these events? Um there's, there are guys who I see come in the gym. I'm sure, you know, you see it too. My, they come in the gym and they're like trying these implements over and over and over and like failing over and over, uh, getting ready for a competition, like putting comp weight on and trying it. Uh, and you know, it's like, they're like, I did an event in January and we did a yoke press and this guy comes in like every day trying to do this 200 pound yoke press. He's like trying to get it, trying to like jump under it, split jerk it. Uh, and I'm like, Dude, like there, it's already crunch time, so there's not a whole lot he can do. Yeah. 140 pound press, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a technique issue. You're just not strong enough. Yeah. Um, and there's there's one instance I like to compare it to uh, Olympic weightlifting mm -hmm. because uh, you know some people will say, uh, you know, even like Ripito will say like, you just need to get stronger. You know, uh, not always the case. Um, when like. Uh, in some cases, yes. Like I remember this one kid came in for a drop in, uh, and he was doing, he was, uh, wanting to get into weightlifting and he's doing his clean. Right. And, uh, he's trying to clean 225, and, uh, he keeps like getting the bottom and like it slams down on him. He drops it. Uh, and he, and he's like, Alan, can you give me some pointers? And I always tell people, I'm like, dude, I'm not a weightlifting coach, but I'll look at it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so he does this clean and it looks good. And he just gets pinned and drops it. And he's like, He's like, fuck, man. He's like, what's the, what's the deal? And I was like, how much do you front squat? And he's like, my best front squat's 245. And he's trying to clean 225, you know? And I'm like, yeah. dude, I, just, I think it's a strength issue, man. You just yeah. get your front squat up to 315, and I, that 225 is going to be a lot more manageable. Uh, but then you look on the other side of it, and uh, when I went to – I recently went to Occam Athletics, which is Ben Clairdad's Olympic yeah, weightlifting gym. It really cool. That looked like a great time. And when I was, ma I made a little YouTube video about it. And when I was making the video, I took some clips from Silent Mike's uh, uh, YouTube because he had went there and got some coaching from Ben. Uh, and Silent Mike, dude who's pulled 700 pounds uh, and squatted like you know high fives, he's like struggling to snatch like 95 pounds, you know. Uh, and so at that point, it's like. Mike is plenty strong. He just needs a lot more exposure to these lifts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's like two ends of the spectrum. You know, like you just have to like be critically think about like what what I need to improve on. Um, but with that said, I think the strongman is a lot less technical than Olympic weightlifting. So, yeah, so I think that most people will be okay just like throwing themselves into it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be so I wouldn't be so loose with telling people like just go do a weightlifting meet. Just do it, man. You know, like I. I'd be a lot quicker to say that for a strongman competition for someone who's been lifting than a weightlifting meet because I don't think strongman is as technical. So. Right on, right on. And then uh, last question, we'll close it out. But what are your future plans with your training, my man? Now that you've you're back, what are you thinking? So I don't have any meets uh, or competitions lined up. Um, I kind of wanted to actually take a short break uh, from it because since I've been working with Austin, it's been. Uh, like do a competition, take a low stress week, you're right back to competition prep, you know. Uh, so it's like every three months, I feel like I was like getting ready for competition. Mm -hmm. uh, in VRs. Um, and then maybe compete at the end of the year. 
at the end of this year, maybe in December. But uh, as far as, you know, strong man, um, I've just got a few few goals that I want to hit, you know, with the, the barbell lifts uh, that I'd like to focus on before worrying about strong man. And I know that uh, Austin would probably, probably ignore my message if I sent him a message saying, hey, can I start – can I? Can you help me achieve these competitions? <laughs> so, so I don't want to put that on him. Uh, so I'd rather just let him do his job and help me drive my lifts up. Uh, so I don't know when I'd return to doing strongman, but it is something that I would like to do. Uh, maybe even as soon as uh, California Strongest Man early next year. Right on, man. Cool, dude. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, dude. Absolutely. And, uh, appreciate this, man. So yeah, I'll put this up uh, probably on my channel, and then uh, or whatever we can figure something out, and then it'll yeah, be good people to uh, to drop drop some questions, and uh, we'll help out as best we can, man. Cool. We can maybe even do. What's up? Good. I said we can maybe even do uh, a post Nats reflection of uh, yeah. how you did, or uh, maybe like a why you think you did what you could have improved on, what you uh, didn't think helped, what, did, what, what you did well. So just kind of a, a reflection on how you do it now. Oh, yeah.